a story of coming uh, a man who came to seek out Bodhidharma in great distress. And he said, please help me. My mind is not at peace. Record this, record this. Sure. I was thinking when I was chipping the ice, I was like thinking like, gosh, this is a kind of a task where just a little bit, we keep on having to come back and say, okay, we're not there yet, we're not there yet. But it's just like the most infinitesimal difference between enough chipping and uh, and not enough chipping is, is really the difference. And so that's why I was trying to think like, okay, this is linked to the meditation this morning, following the breath. It's the out breath that helps focus, you know, where are you gonna put this ice pick? So you don't puncture your tires and get this vehicle out of here. You know, we got to get to the studio. So we may go in circuitous pathways to find it. But all the while we're going in those circuitous pathways, it's never absent. So everything you do is actually an awakening. Hi, I'm Sander Hicks. I'm a licensed contractor and uh, I got a niche here in New York City making loft beds and lofted spaces for people. And what we're doing this week, in five or six days, we are going to do a, the biggest lofted space, loft bed uh, ever. We are going to put in a 19 foot wide loft with walnut trim, white milk plexiglass, uh, birch plywood floors. It's going to look great. It's not, it's not Zen carpentry because we are, we are like Zen masters. It's more like, uh, it's more like, it's, it's something I'm aspiring to, to like try to like uh, have more calm and mindfulness as a part of uh, the practice. All right, so this is the peace tank. This is our major asset two and a half years ago. I got this for 600 bucks off Craigslist, spending a lot of my book advance. And all the paths that lead to that experience involve struggle, involve, and the struggle is where the energy comes from. We're going to demolish this whole wall uh, all the way up to here to here, and this is coming out. Trouble in transit, got through the roadblock, we blended in with the crowd. We got computers, we're tapping phone lines, we know that that ain't allowed. We dress like students, we dress like housewives, we're in a suit and a tie. When something's going wrong in a carpentry job, I find it's actually really helpful to just uh, stop, let the anger flow out my fingers, feel it, and take a deep breath, and say, you know what, it's actually no big deal. That's actually something I heard once from the Zen teacher, Sherry Roshi, Shingei Sherry Roshi, who we are gonna go see tomorrow night. It's, it's no big deal. Each one of us has something like that to contend with. And because of it, we can open. We can learn what it is to be present to, call it oneness, call it emptiness, doesn't matter. All right, this is the most zen elevator in the world. I love the light fixtures. Isn't this nice? Yeah. I've gotten over thinking this elevator should be faster. This elevator, this, this 
speed of this element. This is the speed of this element. Yeah. yeah. This is this element. Exactly. It really is. All we can do is surrender. Exactly right. Or climb up into the roof. Whoa. We've arrived. I'm really good at is getting really amazing, dramatic, handsome, local hardwoods, walnut, catalpa, cherry, and uh, so we went online, looked at Google Images, and she picked out a design for a staircase, really straight, geometric, uh, kind of harsh, geometric lines. She's a pretty tough lady. Alright, so anyway, this is catalpa, this is really rough, this is a piece that I finished as a sample for the, the Leslie job, which is the um, big loft. And it looks really great. This is, uh, this is oil, the edge is finished here. And this is what we're gonna make uh, a pretty staircase out of it. Because instead of like going on the wood, it goes in the wood. You know, it's from a tongue, a tongue tree in China. The tongue nut. It gives you tongue oil. My name's Skylar Toski. I work for Zen Carpentry. I've been working for Sander for about eight months now. Um, the first time I worked with him, uh, I hadn't even met him yet. We, uh, we drove up to upstate New York to um, replace the, the roof of a woodshed at a Zendo, a uh, Buddhist temple. And uh, it was a really cool experience. Uh, Sander's really into to Buddhism and practicing Zen and meditating. And that was my first time being exposed to it, so it was, a, it was actually a, a pretty influential thing for me, and uh, it's been uh, it stayed with me since. I had this French intellectual uh, whose name I won't use right now, um, but he was in some ways a really great guy. But he was a terrible laborer. He had no skills as a carpenter, and he was like a grunt laborer, and he was just always talking, talking, talking. So eventually we parted ways, it's too bad. But um, he did say something really, really insightful. He said, oh Sander, I know that if you call your business Zen Carpentry, it obviously means that you do have an anger management problem. And I was just kind of like, at first I was like, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And then I was like, God, he's kind of right. You know, it's like the attraction, my attraction to Zen is not because I'm like, super peaceful and enlightened, you know, in the same way that we were just making jokes about the peace tank driving in Manhattan and like, you know, threatening, threatening errant pedestrians jaywalking in front of the, the tank of peace. You know, it's like, it's elbows up, baby. <laughs> Jesus, people are lining up to touch the hem of her garment, but she probably would like smack me for saying that, so. Uh... What we're here to do is drop it away drop it away. There's so much accretion. There's so much that gets in our way. And we can't even see anything and it's all being revealed all the time. So for Zen practitioners, it's how do we strip away all of the personal, emotional, uh, conditioned way of viewing everything th what happens is we view everything through lenses of various colors, right? And we feel there's something there, but we can't quite see it. It's, it's like this veil. How do we take that veil away and really become one with everything that is breathing with us? And you know what? It's, it's all about the people. Renee was really great. Okay, it's great to work with Dan and Steve again. Um, great, thank you. 
and um, Thomas, a new guy. Uh, yeah, good to work. Uh, and Renee has been uh, this great new designer carpenter <clears throat> and um, just a really incredible jack of all trades, inventor, creative person. That's what we're doing. Uh, so normally if, if I didn't have any strings to support this from the top, this span would be much too long to rest on just those two columns. We'd need to put at least one in the center if not two. And that's it. So we should finish in about an hour. <laughs> These books, Rebel Buddha, On the Road to Freedom. Oh my god. So the next step is appreciating the helpfulness of the neuroses of others. Their confusion, their emotions, their suffering can also wake us up. They impact our mind and touch our heart at once. If we can genuinely relate to our neuroses and their neuroses at the same time, every meeting, every exchange becomes mutually liberating. That the, when the Roshi said that thing about you do a retreat, you meditate, and you come back to the city, and you can't help but observe the suffering on everybody's faces, you know, and like, that was like a moment of like, ah, oh, she's really hitting me right in my core, and I'm resonating with every single molecule of my fiber, my being right now, because I know exactly, I felt, you know, there's something called mirror neurons in the brain. Uh, the mirror neurons were all going off. I felt total connection, total empathy with what she was saying about that because, yeah, the city is full of people that need to meditate more, you know? People that if they could let go of their anger and their illusions, it'd be a better place. And we're all on the path. <laughs> That's after three, three, three days of trying. We're free! My mind is just filled with all kinds of stress and uh, dissatisfaction. Please pacify my mind. And Bodhidharma said, bring me your mind and I'll pacify it for you. And this man, Eka, said, I've searched everywhere. <clears throat> and I cannot find my mind. And Bodhidharma said, there, I have pacified your mind. <laughs>